Greetings everyone, this is Ahab Ever from the Chronicles of Ahab Ever, and today's video is about a light to the nations, what does the Tanakh say? So this question came about um, partially because I've been, uh, been involved in a number of discussions with people mostly from uh, Western countries where they speak English um, concerning this uh, idea uh, about Israel being a light to the nations. And what I find is that sometimes people misunderstand it, um, and mainly in the Western sense, uh, people who speak English, who read in English and don't read uh, the Tanakh in Hebrew. Um, and I think one of the reasons that that happens is mainly because they don't read the full uh, text that talks about this concept, in, uh, and they don't read it in, not only within context, but they just simply don't get the idea from the actual text and what it says. So in this video, I'm going to go over the times where it's mentioned in the Tanakh about Israel being a light to the nations. And under, one con when, under what context does it mean that Israel will be a light to the nations? Of course, as always, the Tanakh uh, in Hebrew is the source of the material. It is the source material for what I'm about to be speaking about. It's the source material for this idea um, as it was originally presented in the, the Hebrew language. Uh, so, of course, English translations and the English understandings don't apply uh, to this particular concept. So the first place that this idea is first expressed is in the, the, the writings of the prophet Yeshiyahu, uh, Manavi, um, in uh, English you call him Isaiah. And I'll read the whole thing through and then I'll kind of break down the important parts which I have uh, in the different colors. So basically starting from the beginning from the right side of the top it says, Harvar asher hoza Yeshiyahu ben Amotz al Yehudo v'Yerushalayim v'hoyo ba'acharit ha'yomim nachon iye harbet Adonai ba'rosh ha'horim v'niso Mijabaut, when our ru elo, cola joim. Wahalahu amim verbim, omru lahu, when ala al haradonoi, ala bit aloe, Yaakov, we your reno medorho, when elaho bach or hortho, Kimsi on the set or zoro, with the varadon amuru shaloim. Washo fat a ben ha joim, or he yahle amim verbim, Wahitanu, Wahitafu, so translating this, starting at the very beginning, uh, where it's not colored at the top right, essentially this is um, you know something that a vision that was given to uh, the prophet Yeshiau, who uh, in English you know him as Isaiah, and he is Yeshiau ben Amotz, which means he's the son of Amotz, and this is about uh, the area of Yehuda, uh, Yehudo. Um, in Jerusalem, so the area of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem and Yehuda. So then the yellow part, it basically says that this is talking about what's called Be'acharit HaYomim. Now Be'acharit HaYomim is often translated as the last days in English, which could be very, um, it can be misunderstood by people because it's essentially what it really is talking about is talking about the, um, this is the time of uh, basically Yomot Mashiach, meaning that this is the time when there will be a return of the Torah-based nation, um, as well as the uh, Jewish slash Israeli people keeping the Torah correctly in the land of Israel with a, a governmental system that is based on Torah uh, all the way down to the average person living by Torah in the land. And what it basically says is it continues in the yellow um, outside of the red and it says that um, that basically the, the temple that stood in Jerusalem will, will be reestablished and it will be correct in the way that it's uh, managed, in the way that it acts, in terms of how the people of Israel manage it and act within it. Um, and basically that this uh, idea that the, the will of Hashem will be across the nation and all the the, uh, the nations of the world will flow like to, the, uh, to this land, to the land of Israel. So continuing where the blue section is, um, and you'll notice that there's a number of uh, words that are highlighted in uh, red. Um, and basically what that says is that many peoples will walk up. And this is when it says, uh, it says, Amim Rabim, Rabim. And it's talking about nations, nations of people um, will go up, uh, will go. And uh, they will say, like, let's um, go up uh, to the, um, the the mountain of Hashem and uh, to the house of Hashem, meaning that the Beit Hamikdash, Elohei Yaakov. Now, what must be, be noted here is that these people in this situation are not Jews who are saying this because um, it doesn't connect them being Jews. It doesn't make them out to be Jews. But it's basically saying that these are people from the nations who will go up and say, um, you know, let's go up and. Um, um, 
you know, go up to the place where the, the temple of uh, the creator of all things stands and also uh, where the people of Israel, um, you know, like uh, managed, if you will, the temple of, uh, you know, of the Beth Amidash, the uh, place of Hashem. So then when it continues, it basically says that they're going up in order to learn of Hashem's ways. And uh, basically they'll say to the inhabitants, uh, you know, the, also to learn, to go to the inhabitants and learn from them. And what it, the reason why it says this is because of the fact that it says a very famous line, which says, Ki mitzion tetze toro so essentially what this is saying is that the people of the world at some point will recognize during this time, this period called the Baharit Ayumim, that the, um, the Torah comes from, um, from Sion, uh, meaning the Jewish people as well as the land of Israel, and the word of Hashem comes from Jerusalem. Now if you continue in the green section, the first part is highlighted in red, where it says um, that basically it's talking about the um, the person who will be the Mashiach, who will be the, the, the return of the Davidic king, um, and he will like judge the nations, um, and he will um, basically, um, you know, in a sense I guess you could say um, when they make mistakes, he can help them correct their mistakes essentially, and it still says, rabim. And essentially, it's still identifying these people as being someone who are not a part of the nation of Israel, but the nations that come, and knowing that the Torah, you know, is correctly kept by the Jewish people in the land of Israel. And then it continues on in the green and says that basically they will take their weapons and, you know, like um, turn them out into like things that don't have to do with war anymore, and that there will no longer be war one nation against another nation. So essentially, what this means is that this idea of being a light to the nations is under this concept of it being in the time frame when there will be a a Jewish nation uh, in the land of Israel that keeps Torah, um, and that uh, because of the fact that this Jewish nation keeps Torah, it will change the way the world operates. So continuing in Yeshua Hanavi, um, starting in um, Mem Bet He, which Mem Bet would be um, 40, 42, and then also verse 5, it says, <laughs> now, essentially, when translating this, if you go um, starting in the yellow section at the top, um, it essentially talks about like Hashem being the creator of all things, um, and just you know discusses this idea that He created all things that are reality. And when you get to the green, that's where it starts mentioning uh, something that focuses on what we're talking about here. That it says that Hashem. Um, basically like called the Jewish people to like um, to be correct for example and he strengthened the hand of the Jewish people and, um, and essentially what it says in the red in the green section the first green section it says that Hashem will give um, uh, will give the Jewish people as a type of agreement to the world if you were to the, the um, and then it says the or joim so essentially what that says is that the first mention of being a or to the, the light to the nations, the or joyim, is saying that this is only happening because of the fact that Hashem has given the Israeli people um, to be you know, a light to the nations by strengthening the Jewish people in the Torah. Uh, and basically, it's not a situation where there's like some mitzvah for the Jewish people to go out and say, okay, we're light to the nations, let's go do A, B, C, and D. This whole episode is talking about uh, during the time when there was a return of the Davidic uh, kingdom and the, the keeping of the Torah from the national setting all the way down to the regular normal setting in the land of Israel happens amongst the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Um, and it basically says that during that time, the world's eyes, you know, would be opened and that basically people will almost like be set free from darkness, if you will. But again, this light that we're talking about is something that Hashem causes, because again, at the end, it even says that Hashem is the one who's causing this to happen. And um, essentially, it's like saying that, okay, it's not something where the Jewish people go active, out actively and say, we're light to the nations, let's go do A, B, C, and D. But that essentially, when the world sees that the uh, there's Israelis who are keeping the Torah correctly in the land of Israel, um, and they're seeing this success from such an endeavor, that essentially that is the light that the creator of all things gave to the nations. So continuing in Mim Tet He of Yeshua, the prophet Isaiah, 
um, that's in uh, three, it's in 49 verse 5. It says, "Wata omer rabono yot suri me patan la avad holo lo shovev li agov elo wi israel lo yosef wa kaved abe ene abono wa lo hai ho yo ozi wi omer nogel mi othcho li avad lo akim et shivte yagov un suri un suri israel lo shiv." So again, this particular section again mentions the when the green part where the, the red is highlighted. It basically says again that Hashem is giving the Jewish people to be a light to the nations. And it's talking about it again from the standpoint that once things are corrected in the land of Israel, amongst the Jewish people, uh, with a Torah-based nation here, that Hashem is the one who causes the, the, the people of Israel to be a light to the nations um, and basically be um, a type of like assistance or help to the nations by by I'm Israel, the people of Israel keeping the Torah. So again, none of this is ever predicated on the idea that just simply by being Jewish, a person is a light to the nations. Uh, what this is predicated upon is that once the Jewish nation is established in the land of Israel with a Davidic king and with the temple and all the all the things of that nature, um, and the Torah being kept from the average person all the way up to the king, that this situation and the success of it essentially is what causes their, you know, the people of Israel to be a light to the nations because this is what Hashem has given to happen. So that's an important aspect of this is that it's not just some like, you know, here's a mitzvah, be a light to the nations, you know, whatever that means. Um, this is a situation where Hashem causes this to happen by the existence of a Torah-based nation in the land of Israel. So the next way to back this up is in uh, Micha, uh, the prophet Micha, uh, chapter 4. It basically mentions basically the same thing Yeshua mentions. And it says, starting in the green at the top right, so Micha says the exact same thing about this uh, time from which he also, which I have highlighted in uh, the top first uh, sentence in red, which is that all of this happens He says the exact same thing that Yeshua mentions um, about it being a time when the uh, the temple is established in the land of Israel. The time frame is the time of there being a, a Davidic king, meaning Mashiach, um, who's sitting on the throne in the land of Israel, the Jewish people being in the land of Israel and keeping the Torah correctly in the land of Israel, and that this situation by its reality causes a situation where the world looks and says, from uh, the land of Zion comes the Torah, and the word of Hashem is from Yerushalayim. So it's like saying the world recognizes at this point, um, you know, that that's, you know, where the will of Hashem comes from, the word of Hashem comes from, and they know that when there are questions or issues uh, concerning, for example, the, um, the way that things are supposed to work, that, that basically they go to the Jewish nation at this point. But again, it never says that the world becomes Jewish um, as a part of this, you know, and that basically it continues to identify the people that are of the nations as being distinct nations. It doesn't mention them being Jewish. It doesn't mention them being Israeli. So what this essentially means is that the idea um, is that there's nothing that you know requires the non-Jewish nations ever to become Jewish in order to get you know a light from Hashem, if you will, or to be um, you know presentable to the Creator of all things. The Creator of all things, you know, it has you know has uh, a mission for both the Jewish people and the non-Jewish people in the world, um, and that the the Jewish people are, are keeping the Torah that was given at Mount Sinai, and the non-Jewish people of the world basically keep, keep what's called the seven mitzvot, uh, mitzvot the seven um, um, mitzvot of Noah or the the commands that were given to Noah, the Noah laws, as uh, they're often called in English, you know, so that basically, you know, when the Jewish nation does the Torah, um, as it was given at Mount Sinai, and when the non-Jewish nations do um, the Shiva Mitzvot that were given to Adam, Rishon, or Adam, and also given to Noah, the last one given to Noah, that essentially because all human beings descend from those two people, that essentially that these are the laws that the nations are required to do, and the Jewish people are required to keep the Torah, but essentially it's like saying the Jewish people become leaders amongst the world uh, because of the fact that everybody will recognize that the Torah comes from, uh, you know, from Zion and the word of Hashem comes from Yerushalayim. 
So the way to back this up um, in terms of the time frame of when this light to the nations is supposed to happen, the Malbim, the Radak, and Mitsudat Dawid, who were commentators of uh, the Tanakh, um, who did a commentary in Yeshiyahu, basically they say the exact same thing, that whenever the issue comes up of mentioning Wahoyah Baharith al Yamim, it says, uh, they say basically um, in different wording every once in a while, but basically the same thing. It says, So essentially, what this means is that during the, um, you know, in English people call it the messianic era, but I hate that term because Mashiach doesn't mean Messiah, but essentially what it means is that during the time of the return of the Davidic king, um, when the world recognizes that the uh, people of Israel have been keeping the Torah correctly, and uh, in a sense, you know, that Hashem is with the Jewish people that the, the time frame it's being talked about is a very specific time frame. It's not just this overall thing where there's a command for Jews to be a light to the nations at all times and all points, but essentially what it's a requirement in order for all this to happen is the Jewish people have to keep the Torah correctly. And once that happens in the land of Israel, it causes the world to change. And once there's a Davidic king and the return of prophecy and things like that amongst the Jewish people, that that changes things around. So basically to conclude, the Hebrew Tanakh clearly defines the criteria. It is clear from the Hebrew Tanakh um, that uh, Israel being a light to the nations is a result of Hashem causing the return of a Torah-based nation when there is a Davidic king. And again, that this is during a very specific time in history in the future and is not, uh, you know, all a thing. And the reason why I bring this up is because I have been in situations where people have said, OK, well, Jews should be, for example, converting people because aren't we supposed to be a light to the nations? I've also heard people say, well, Jews should be involved in this or that. Aren't we supposed to be a light to the nations? But you know, again, when you ask them, OK, well, specifically, where do you get that from? And what does it say in the text? There's a lot of people who don't know because they've only heard people say these things, but they never actually read the text for themselves from start to finish. Uh, to understand the context and if so many of them who have heard people say this in this way don't read it in Hebrew so that's where they get a kind of a wrong concept with it so this is a have ever from the Chronicles of have ever and I hope that um, this clears up the issue of what exactly does the Tanakh mean uh, when it says that the people of Israel will become in the future a light to the nations or Lagoyim le or Lagoyim um, that essentially means that it'll happen during the time when there's a return to the Davidic kingdom so take care and bye